Hey students, welcome to the Mask Up Scale Down Green Sock Animation Image Effect. Here's a quick look at our finished animation. I came across this effect in this cool Chevy Tahoe ad that I saw on Twitter, alright? You'll notice as this ad plays, there's a lot of sort of masking effects going on of images being revealed, alright? And images shrinking and growing as masks change size. Uh, there's a really nice double mask effect happening here at the end. What we're going to do today is really focus on what happens here in the beginning, alright? Let's go back to the first frame here, and you'll see that we start with the Tahoe only revealed through this small mask and the image itself is really quite big and as we play you're going to see that the mask grows up while the image scales down and gets smaller all right let's just watch it one more time and towards the end here you'll see we get that little shrink all right so after the image grows up there's a nice slow sort of scale down of everything all right and it all just is timed really nicely uh, and I found it very eye-catching so what we're going to do is make our own version that looks like this. We're just going to focus on that one effect of the mask up scale down. And a lot of this is going to be on how we set up our CSS and HTML. So the first thing I want to do is build things out so we have our resolve frame here on the right. And then we'll go to our first frame which is where we're going to be animating from which I'm going to call our start frame. Let's get going. Hey, if you like this video real quick, please subscribe and sign up for notifications. Thanks so much. So in this starter file, I'm going to go through the basic HTML and CSS setup a little bit more than normal because it's so key to how everything works. Now here we have this papaya whip square in our document and it is because we have this div with a class of add here. Okay, that's all we have on our page and the add class creates a 600 by 600 pixel element for us. It has display flex set up so everything inside of it will be centered and the background color is papaya whip. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just scaling it down slightly to a scale of 0.7 so that we can see the entire ad and have enough space to read the code over here, okay? So the ad is gonna be sort of our wrapper that contains everything. Inside of the ad, I'm gonna have a mask element and now let's just run and you'll see that it's going to be another square that's a little bit smaller with a salmon background, okay? So let's uh, scroll on down to our mask element and here you'll see it's 550 by 550 with a background color of salmon and an overflow of hidden, all right? So inside the ad we have our mask and it's gonna control how much of the image is revealed. Speaking of images, inside of our mask, let's put in an image of our bus, all right? So the image, let's run it, has a class of bus. Ooh, isn't that nice? And it's sitting right inside the mask element. The bus also has a width of 550 by 550, so it sits very nicely inside of our mask. Capiche? So with what we have going on here, we basically have things set up as we want them to resolve from our animation. So now what we have to do is build out the starting frame of our animation, where we're animating from. And quickly, in our start frame, what we wanna do is scale the image up really big and create a small mask that only reveals a small part of it. To create this mask, we're gonna use Clip Path Polygon. And if you're not familiar with it, check out this lesson in B-Sides, Bonuses, and Oddities, where we have this lesson using a clip path and a custom effect for multi-directional wipes, all right? Uh, this lesson goes over all the basics of using clip path polygon and how we're going to plug in coordinates for the mask area that we're animating to or from, okay? And then down here, you're gonna have this much more elaborate example where we have all of these different masking effects using Clip Path Polygon. And we sort of go the extra mile in creating something using what's called register effect, all right? And it allows us to create timelines that have our own effect names and we can plug in our own custom properties uh, and it's really powerful. And all the code for that is up here where we're registering the different coordinates for the different effects or directions that we're animating to. Now I know that's a lot to throw at you, um, but we have bunches of exercises on register effect and really one of the strengths of your membership is that when I want to use some of these effects again, I don't need to start from the beginning. I can reference a 20 minute video that I have and multiple lessons, all right? So enough about that. 
Let's get this clip path going. And real quick, these are the coordinates for the four corners that we'll be plugging into our CSS rule. The top left corner is 30% from the left, 30% from the top, and here we have 70% from the left, 30% from the top, and so on and so on. So I showed you all that so that I can take my mask rule and add another property for clip path polygon with those coordinates I just showed you. Now when I run, we should just see sort of a cropped out version of that bus. Boom, there we go. I love it. So what's gonna happen is we're going to animate this mask up to full size while the bus is shrinking down. So let's jump into our JavaScript now, and I've done a little bit of work of setting up a GSAP timeline and getting GS Dev tools ready to go. Now we could either grow the mask or shrink the image first, it doesn't really matter, uh, but to make things easy, I am gonna do the image size. So I'm going to do a from tween, I'm gonna select the bus, and I'm gonna say that let's start at a scale of two. All right, let's run. And now we should have just a very simple scale animation happening inside that box, all right? So we're gonna start like this on the first frame, sort of zoomed in, and then we're going to shrink down. And while that's happening, I'm also going to animate our mask. So our mask starts like this, so we're going to do a two tween on the mask, and we're going to animate two clip path settings that will reveal the full size of the image. And what we can do is jump on over to that lesson I just referenced, and in this demo here I have a full setting, okay? And using percentages, that's going to be all four corners with percentage syntax. So let me just copy that out, go back to my demo here, and if I paste in that string, this should work. Now the thing is, I didn't put a position parameter in here, so watch how it's a little bit wrong, all right? Okay, uh, so here we have scale, and then the mask grows to its full size, all right? Well, clearly we want these things happening at the same time, so I'm gonna use a position parameter of zero here. And now when I run, this is actually gonna look pretty good, I think. Look at that. We start, so the image scales down as the mask zooms up, all right? Wait, I have this name wrong. Oh my goodness, it should be mask up, scale down. So sorry about that. Now the last part of this is once everything gets sort of to its resolved state, the image just sort of scales down, all right? And the way we do that is we scale down the mask element with the image inside of it. So we're just gonna do a two tween here on the mask, and we're going to say that your scale is gonna go down just very slightly, I'm gonna say to 0.95 and it's going to be a duration of, we'll say two seconds, okay? So let's just give this a little shot and it just adds a little nice feeling to the end. Ah. So when I said ah, that means it looks really nice as it's moving slowly. We'll watch this one more time, ah, okay? So that ah moment is, check it out, ah, okay? Beautiful. And in that Tahoe ad, during the ah moment is where the text actually comes in. Let's go take a look. Here we are on our starting frame. Image is scaled up. Mask is small. So let's play. Ah, all right. That was that little shrink we've been working on. So let's just scroll back a little bit. There's the effect we built. And there's the ah as it shrinks down. All right. So when does the text come in? All right, the text actually comes in a little bit on the way up, and then on the scale down, it's just sort of sitting there static. And then we didn't build this last part because you do the last part, then you gotta do the next part, yada, yada, yada. Um, we get how the masking works, but on the way out, if you wanna experiment and put this in, pay attention to what's happening here. There's just a few frames where the mask is going to get bigger again, okay? And you'll see that the Tahoe just there's like one or two frames of like blur, which you probably don't even need, but I think it scales a little bit independently also. And then we have another sort of shrink effect, all right, where we have overflow hidden and this big picture is just coming in with a nice slow ease out while that text is fading in. So this might be a fun ad to take a few steps further. Um, I definitely like at the end here, there's a sort of double mask, all right? So we have these two images here, and then as we progress forward, 
you'll see that this is doing the trick that we just built while a mask is shrinking on those two images out there, all right? It's actually really well done, all right? So here in the center, we have our mask up, scale down, while this mask is shrinking, okay? And again, this stuff happens so quick, it's like fractions of a second, but it just looks really nice, all right? So hopefully this lesson here inspired you to use this effect in your own projects and maybe have a greater appreciation of these ads that you just fly by all the time, all right? Some of them actually have some really good motion work in them and they're a great source of inspiration. If you want to see more lessons like this, please let me know. And if you come across an effect you need help with, send it my way. Maybe I can break it down. Happy animating! Do you want to gain mastery of the Greensock animation platform through more videos like this? I'll show you all the tips and tricks I've learned over a decade of using GSAP, working at Greensock, and teaching it to thousands of developers like you. My training is guaranteed to save you hours of frustration as you learn to add ultra slick animations to all your web projects. Visit creativecodingclub.com today to unlock the world's most comprehensive Greensock training. And let me help you discover the joy of animating with code.